The Lord be with you. Good morning, St. Mark. It is good to see your faces this morning. This is a new year. It's the first Sunday in January, the first Sunday of the year. And we are gathered in this place this morning to worship God. We are gathered here this morning to fellowship with each other. We are gathered here this morning to be strengthened, to go out into the world as disciples and to change the world. And so I am thankful to seeing you here this morning. For those who are worshiping with us online, I extend a very warm welcome to you. And for all of those who are worshiping with us for the first time, thank you for being here. I know you could have chosen to go somewhere else, but you're here this morning, and I promise you, you're in for a great time because the Holy Spirit is here, and we are going to have church. Amen? Amen. We are going to have church. So this morning, I want to invite you to settle yourselves in, prepare your hearts and your minds, and let us now gather and worship. To in, like to invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit and join us in our call to worship as is printed in your bulletin. Christ invites all who are hungry to come to the feast of love. Everyone is welcome to partake of God's goodness. God's table is open to all peoples of all nations. No one will be turned. Let us accept God's mercy and grace that are extended to us. We come to the table of love. And now if you would join us as we sing our praise hymn, Sing We Now of Christmas, that's number 237 in your red hymnal.
now let us remain standing as we pray our prayer of confession together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with, with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Loving and gracious Lord, we thank you for the privilege to come to you at all times. There are no limits to when we should pray or where we should pray. You invite us to come. We confess how often we fail to accept your invitation, how often we neglect to cast our cares upon you, and how often we choose to carry our burdens by ourselves. Forgive us, we pray. Remind us of your grace that is available to us and your desire to grant the victory in every trial. Amen. Hear the good news. We have a friend in Jesus. He will bear all our sins and sorrows. Turn to him, for it is our loss when we fail to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us now turn towards one another to show signs of peace, love, and reconciliation. Good morning, everyone. Hello, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Eric Steverson, and today I'm here as your new Staff Parish Relations Committee Chair. It's my honor and pleasure to address you on this special occasion. Today marks an exciting moment for St. Mark as we welcome someone truly exceptional into our community. It's my honor to introduce you to the Reverend Andy Andrew Peabody, who joins us as our new Associate Minister. Andy's roots in the United Methodist Church run deep. His upbringing was surrounded by the ministry with his father, the Reverend Dr. Joe Peabody Sr., dedicating over 50 years to pastoring churches in North Georgia until his passing in 2020. His mother, Ann Cottrell Peabody, contributed to education in Georgia's public and private schools. Additionally, Andy's brother, Reverend Joe Peabody Jr. follows his own calling as an ordained elder in the North Georgia Conference. His educational journey led him through Emory University where he graduated with distinction in history in 1992. After engaging in teaching and graduate studies at the University of Georgia, Andy returned to Emory earning his Master's of Divinity from the Candler School of Theology in 1998. Andy's dedication to ministry led him through candidacy in the North Georgia Conference, culminating in his commissioning in 2007 and subsequent ordination in 2011. Notably, his mentor was the Reverend Dr. Jim, excuse me, the Reverend Jimmy Moore. Recently, Andy responded to a missional call of the cabinet, overseeing a United Methodist Church congregation that made the decision to disaffiliate this past December. 
In addition to his remarkable dedication to ministry, Andy's personal resilience shines through. A two-time cancer survivor and chemotherapy survivor, he anticipates celebrating five years since his last indication of cancer in 2025. <clears throat> Currently undergoing hemodialysis three times a week, he holds hope for an eventual kidney transplant, and we will be praying for that as well. Andy goes by he, him pronouns, and his enthusiasm in joining St. Mark resonates with our own excitement, gratitude, and sense of blessing in having him with us and supporting the missions of St. Mark. After today's worship, I encourage each of you to extend a warm St. Mark greeting and give Andy the heartfelt welcome he deserves. Once again, let's welcome Andy to St. Mark with open hearts and open arms. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to be with you in worship this morning. I, I will take one moment of personal privilege and say I'm grateful to have my lifelong oldest and dearest friend join us for worship this morning. Thank you for being here this morning. There are prayer cards in the back of the pews. You always know that we want to keep you connected with the prayers of the church. And I believe Dr. Carolyn will be sharing a little bit about that today. We want to remember some things this morning. Former St. Mark member Bill Whitaker passed away on New Year's Eve. A memorial service will be held in Bluffton, South Carolina. Please keep Bill's husband, Matthew, and Bill's loved ones in your prayers. Also, we want to extend our heartfelt condolences to Nancy Monroe, who lost her sister, Lavana Waits, last week. Please surround her and uh, enfold Nancy and her family during this, this time. Uh, our member, Dr. Jesse Peel, passed away on Thursday, December 28th, and his celebration of life is tentatively scheduled for Saturday, January 27th, and details will follow. Please do keep Jesse's family and friends in your prayers. Also, Dale and Scotty Becker are both hospitalized in Piedmont, uh, Piedmont Fayetteville. Jim Baker's sister is in the hospital, and we also ask you to keep Jim in your prayers this week as he'll be having hip replacement surgery on Tuesday. A prayer list is always updated, as you know, and kept fresh. I know that we have prayers of our, owns, of our own, and I hope that you will take them with you to God in this time of prayer to follow. I invite you to do what you do when you pray. Creator God, we come before you this Epiphany Sunday remembering the mysterious strangers who, having sought the Christ child across great distances, came into his young life and bore precious gifts. And in remembering the Magi, we are also reminded of all of the strangers with whom we share our world, truly your world. And we are blessed to think that we too can embody the Magi's spirit of generosity and hospitality. And lest we become too self-centered, may we also be reminded of how very many times in our lives that we too have been blessed by the kindness of a stranger. Christ, we hold before you those whom we have already named in worship this morning, as well as those whom we have held silently in our hearts. Help us to be quick to help those who are hurting and help us to be patient with those who are brave enough to share their brokenness with us. May we find in our own scars the strength to help others to find healing. And may we be a community of compassion, willing to enter into the suffering of our neighbors. It is in your holy child's name that we pray this morning. Amen.
our reading for the morning. Oops, I'm going to be jumping ahead. I'm going to be skipping the offertory. Please forgive me. (laughs) Come on up, Maddie. As we turn now to a time of giving, I have one important question to ask. (laughs) What did the pirates call Noah's big boat? The Ark! (laughs) Now that I have your attention. I just wanted to say what a blessing it is to be a part of this church that has never once asked me to dim or change who I am and who lets me stand up on a Sunday morning and tell a very good joke for whoever said I was going to get groans this morning. (laughs) And I just wanted to thank you all for being a part of this amazing church, and thank you for the blessings that you bring and the gifts that you bring with you every Sunday just by being here. And I wanted to thank you for your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness in our church. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you during our time of giving where your dollars go. So as you may know, we only talk about it every week, that our breakfast and supper clubs feed about 70 people every week. Those dollars also turn into hats, coats, scarves, blankets for our outreach closet. And most importantly, they turn into joy and love for all of those that are touched by the generosity of St. Mark. So would you join me in a quick prayer Dear God, please just bless these offerings that we place before you and multiply them and help us see how they all go towards your glory and towards your kingdom. All this in your name we pray. Amen. And I would now like to invite the ushers to come forward. the one who judges right from wrong. Your glory excites no envy, but let the one who serves you praise you again and again.
I think my first Sunday might have been my last Sunday if I'd have skipped the offering. <laughs> we are in the epistle to James, of James. We will be looking at the fifth chapter, the verses 13 through 16. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear the word. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in despise forsake thee take it to the Lord in prayer in his arms he'll take and cheer thee thou wilt find a solace The joy and the privilege we have as believers to take to the Lord in prayer all the cares and the concerns that we have. Every January, 
millions of people across the country set out on the journey of accomplishing New Year's resolutions. These are goals that they make, personal goals, that they have set to improve their lives in one way or another. The goals are usually to take on good practices like running or swimming and let go of bad habits like smoking or gambling. If you scroll through some of your friends' social media pages, you most likely will see some of the resolutions that they have made. Whatever those resolutions are, they vow to keep doing them so that they can become their better selves over time. You and I probably have made a resolution or two, right? But the truth, the hard truth about New Year's resolutions is that most persons fail to keep them. I am just going to raise my hand as a witness. I don't know about anyone else. They fail to commit to working at the goals they had set and the promises that they had made to themselves. The success rate of keeping resolutions are very, very low. A recent poll done by Forbes magazine last October showed that most resolutions last just under four months. 8% of the people they surveyed tend to stick to their goals for just one month. 22% will last a maximum of three months. And only 13% will go as far as four months. No matter how beneficial keeping these resolutions would be, more than 85% of the people who made them gave up on them in less than four months. They do not follow through in keeping the commitment they had made, and they do not get to see what their lives would be like if they had truly set out and completed the goals that they had set. This morning, I want us to talk about another type of commitment that most of us who are here this morning have made. If you are a member of St. Mark, when you joined this church, you made the vow to support St. Mark and faithfully participate in the life of its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. As a matter of fact, it's not just if you're a member of St. Mark, but if you're a member of, of any local United Methodist Church congregation, that's what you have vowed and have committed to do. For those who are not members, I welcome you to join this congregation. You will never find another better church. But if you are already a member, you have made that commitment. These five actions are what you have committed to doing as long as you are a member here. So how do we go beyond just simply professing by words what we have vowed to do and actually doing them? Over the next five weeks, we'll be looking at each of these commitments if individually and how we can go about living them out. This morning, we begin with faithfully supporting and participating in the ministries of our church, in the ministries of St. Mark, by our prayers. Now, there is a common trend going around where persons say, I am praying for you, or I am holding you in my thoughts and my prayers. I'm sure you have heard that often. And more times than not, when those phrases are used, it doesn't necessarily mean that one is actually praying. It has become such a flippant phrase, and it is said warm-heartedly, but it doesn't always actualize in what should be. This is not the kind of praying that I'm talking about when we are supporting the ministries of St. Mark. I'm talking about what it meant and what it means even now to truly honor the vow that you made when you became a member of this congregation. It means you will actually go before the throne of God and you will lift St. Mark in your prayers. It means that you will be praying for and with each other. It means that prayer will become the order of your life as you think about this church and where you want this church to go and who you want this church to become. It means that you'll be praying for your member, for each member of this church. 
You'll be praying for the volunteers of this church. You'll be praying for your lay leadership. You'll be praying for your pastors. You'll be praying for the ministries of the church. You'll be praying that God will give us a new vision and that God will provide the resources for the vision which God has given us. The vow that you make actually requires you to pray, to pray for and with your church at all times. In the passage of scripture you heard Reverend Andy read this morning, we hear the writer of James telling the early believers how they should care for each other and be with each other in prayer. His overall letter is about how they should live as a community of faith, following the teachings of Jesus and the traditions of the church. It's about how they should live faithfully as disciples and believers. But this particular portion of his letter reveals the nexus of the community and of the relationship that is cultivated and fostered between and among them. The nexus of the church is prayer. Prayer is what links the members to each other. It is what cultivates and nurtures relationship between the community of faith. James is making it known that when the sick calls upon the church to pray, not only is there healing for the sick, but there is forgiveness where a person may sin. And then there is restoration by God's grace and the community experiences growth. You see, church, prayer is what keeps us connected to God, who is our source. One of the ways I best think about prayer and I best talk about prayer most of us, if not all of us here, has a smartphone, right? And you know what it feels like if you're like me when you see that little battery icon on your phone starting to flash red. What do you do, right? You run for your charger and you connect that phone because you do not ever want to lose power on your smart device. And so you run and you find a plug and you push that thing in and you connect it to the source. God is our source. And the only way that as believers we can continue this journey of discipleship is if we stay connected to God and prayer is our connection. Prayer is the power that we have that keeps us going. God is our source. But prayer is also what binds us together. It grounds us and it forms us as a community of faith. Nothing is more vital to our existence as a congregation than prayer. Nothing is more instrumental to who we are and to who we become as a church than prayer. Prayer is the thread that stitches us together in our faith. It spurs our growth and it builds unity. It binds us together and it strengthens us. Prayer is the lifeline of the believer and it is the lifeline of the church. When you made the vow when you joined, you vowed to support the church and the ministries of the church by and with your prayers. We miss out on so much of God's blessings and provisions when we do not pray. We become weak as a church when we do not pray. We become spiritually anemic when we do not feast upon prayer together. We will stumble and we will become worn out by insignificant things when we do not pray as a church and when we do not pray for and with each other. How many quarrels and fights churches have been through and could have avoided if they had covenanted together and stayed in praying together and with each other. St. Mark, ours is the lost when we do not pray. Prayer is what keeps us connected to the source and what keeps us together as a church, as a community of faith, as St. Mark. There are numerous stories in the New Testament that tells us what happens when the church pray. Read through the book of Acts. In chapter 4, you hear the story about Peter and John when they were arrested and the church was praying. 
And when they were eventually released and they gathered back with the disciples, they started praising God. And when the assembly of believers pray, we are told that the entire place shook with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Peter himself was in prison in stocks and bonds and the church prayed and his stocks were broken and he was set free and an angel led him out because the church was praying. I know it sounds impossible, it almost sounds like a Marvel movie, right? To hear about these extraordinary things that happen when the church prays. But it's true. I have experienced it in my own life and in my church back home and in churches that I've served here in the U.S. But we don't have to go too far. We can take an example from our own book as St. Mark. When I came here two years ago, I asked about the stories of the church and the things that make us who we are as St. Mark. And one of the stories that was shared with me, and I actually asked permission if I could share it in my sermon this morning, it's a story of one of our members who the doctor called her wife and said, come on in because we're going to pull the plug. She was dying. She was not responding to anything and the doctors thought enough time had passed, come on in. But the foundation Sunday school class was holding a prayer vigil for her. And the youth had joined in in that prayer vigil. And they were praying. And she told me that when she got there, the doctor told her, guess what happened? Just before you came, your wife started breathing on her own. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes lives. Ours is the lost when we do not pray. And I'm sure there are many more miraculous stories here at St. Mark that happened because the church prayed. Personally, I think that one of the reasons many people fail to keep their resolutions is because they try going it alone. They're trying to accomplish the goals by themselves. And it's really hard to do life alone. While most New Year's resolutions are done individually and the goals are set individually, that is not the case for us as a church. When we join the United Methodist denomination, when we join a local church, we are specifically taking the step to walk the journey of discipleship with each other, not by ourselves. When you join St. Mark, you are saying, I am going to do this journey of discipleship with others who are on the journey with me. You know the old phrase that says, the family that prays together stays together. The same, I believe it's true that the church that prays together stays together. But I also believe that it's not a journey we do by ourselves. There's the old African proverb that says, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. But if you want to walk far, walk with others. You see, St. Mark, we are doing this journey of discipleship with each other, and that requires us to pray for each other, pray with each other, pray with one another. When you join St. Mark, you join a symbiotic relationship that exists between every member of this community of faith. You enter into an in interdependent relationship that will not go away as long as you are here. And so we are going to pray for and with each other. You may not even know that others are praying for you, but they are. Prayer helps us to be prepared so that we do not crumble as a congregation on the weight of life and the burdens that come as a church. Prayer helps us to stay sturdy. Even when we disagree, prayer helps us to stay sturdy and to hold in the middle that we do not fall apart as a church. So this morning, I want you to imagine with me what we can be as a community of faith, what we can be as a church if we start praying again and if we start praying for each other and with each other daily. Can you imagine with me the extraordinary things that we will do, St. Mark?
can you imagine the lives that will be changed when we start praying again together with each other and for each other? When we start praying about the ministries of the church and the resources of the church and the things that we can do in our neighborhood, can you imagine how this community will be changed? Can you imagine how Midtown will be changed? The prayers of the righteous avail much. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 18 that wherever one or two are gathered in my name, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am. And you can ask God for anything according to my will and God will grant it. So this morning, my challenge to you is to go forward in this new year working towards keeping the commitment that you have made. For those who have not joined as yet, I welcome you to come along. Come alongside us and let us do this journey of discipleship together and let us do it grounded and saturated and permeated in prayer. Prayer will change our church. Prayer will give us a future that is beyond what we could have ever imagined. Prayer will order us in such a way that there will never be a dull moment in the life of St. Mark. So this morning I encourage you, those who are here in person and those who are watching online, pray for your church. Pray for St. Mark. Support the ministries and the life of St. Mark with your prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now go to our Holy Communion as printed in your bulletin on page eight, four actually. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Pour out 
out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other in all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of salvation poured out for you. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table and all are welcome. We serve by intention. We will give you a piece of the bread. You'll come with your hands in the form of a cross. You'll take the bread and you'll dip the bread in the juice. It's the Lord's table and all, all, all are welcome. The ushers will give you instructions how to come. But come and feast at the Lord's table. Come and partake of the goodness of God's grace. Come and be strengthened by this grace so that you can be a person of prayer, but you can also go into the world and change the world. Come, St. Mark. The Lord's table is open. Those who are serving, I invite you now to come forward.
the third Sunday, which is going to be the 21st of January, we're going to introduce to you all the new lay leaders of this church. That's every person who will be serving on our church council because we're having a church council meeting that Sunday. I'm going to invite every one of the members who have been nominated and who have said yes, who will be serving to stand before you so you can see them. You can know what roles they'll be playing in the life of the church and you will know them by their faces and by their names. So please come on out. That's the 21st of January that you'll get the chance to meet your new lay leaders for the year. I now invite you to stand as you're able. One of the things that John, one of the things that John Wesley believed was that we need to renew our covenant with God time and time again. And so this morning, instead of saying our usual Apostles' Creed, we'll be reading, we'll be praying together the covenant prayer. So I invite you now to join with me. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with the whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. I invite you now to turn in your hymnals to page 248 as we sing on this day earth shall ring.
put our hands together for the choir, for Justin, our interim director. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir, for the faithfulness that you have shown over these past few months, just singing and singing and doing it beautifully. St. Mark, we have entered into this relationship, this covenant relationship, and we have entered in saying that we will pray for and with each other. Do it. Do it. Every day. When you don't know what words to say, all you can say is, Lord, I lift St. Mark to you. Choose a ministry. Lord, I lift the Sunday school classes before you. Or I lift the prayer breakfast club, the breakfast club before you. Choose a volunteer. Lord, I lift Scott before you, Roger before you. Choose some name, some persons from that list. But pray for your church. That's how we will grow. That's how we will grow as disciples, and that's how we'll grow in the ministries that we do, by your prayers. St. Mark, as you go, know that you have the Holy Spirit within you. God is not far from you. God is not beside you. God is within you. Go into this year, St. Mark, as people who have the power of the Holy Spirit and change the world. Change the world. Change the things you do not like about the world. Change the world and pray for your church. Go now in the name of God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the peace of God be with you.